Hello and welcome to the Film Story Recap Channel. This is definitely one of the most frightening horror movies of the year. Saying it is thrilling is not because of a startling shot, nor is it a highly tense fright. Rather, it is based on real events, based on one of the four most horrific houses, horror of the Belgian murder house. Ellie and her family moved to a new home. Mother Kira is very happy with the big house, but Ellie didn't like the old, dilapidated house. Walking into the room, Ellie felt a little more strange. The portraits on the walls were too serious. There were special symbols carved on the doors of each room. The whole house did not reveal the warm atmosphere of a new home but gave people a depressing and eerie feeling. Ellie found the cellar of the house. Out of curiosity, she went into the cellar to check it out. But it's dark and dirty inside. She immediately planned to turn around and leave. The door of the cellar closed automatically. Ellie was locked in. Her father, Brian, tried to open the door, but to no avail. Ellie's heart was racing, she felt something approaching behind her. She turned around and found the cellar empty. She immediately became agitated. She felt something behind her getting closer and closer. At the critical moment, Brian finds the key to the door and unlocks it just in time. Ellie also managed to get out of the cellar. The first night they came to their new home. Kira and Brian had to go to the company to work late. Before they leave, they tell Ellie to take care of her brother Stephen. Ellie is very reluctant, but she is used to this life. As night falls, Ellie calls a friend to express her discontent, and the door behind her opened by itself. Suddenly a monster appeared. Ellie was shocked. Luckily, it was just a prank by her younger brother. Ellie asks her younger brother where he found the sheep skull. The brother took him to a storage room. There was an abacus and a phonograph inside. Ellie took out the gramophone and tried to play some music to lighten the mood. But instead of the expected music, she heard an intermittent male voice. He recites some mathematical equations. As the phonograph spun, there seemed to be moving in the cellar. The lights in the room also flickered slightly. Ellie impatiently turned off the gramophone and told her younger brother to go to bed. It was then that she noticed a strange formula on the record. She then lay down on the couch in the living room and watched TV. Strange things started to happen one after another. A sudden gust of wind blew in the cellar, and something seemed to be spreading into the house. The lights in the room also went out one by one. As the bedside lamp in front of Ellie went out, the entire room went dark. She immediately lights a candle and calls her mother. Kira thought the meter in the cellar had tripped, but Ellie's mind was still reeling from the day's events and the shock she just had. She didn't dare to go down into the cellar. Kira could only persuade her that there were only 10 steps in the cellar, so she could count them as she walked and not be afraid. She promised to stay on the phone with Ellie during this time. To spare her brother's fears, Ellie mustered up the courage to take the candle and walk down to the cellar. She took each step with fear and trepidation. The candle in her hand began to shake. Ellie was so frightened that tears came to her eyes, but she continued to take steps forward. Every time she go down a step, she report a number to Kira. Kira listened to Ellie's scared voice and could only continue to encourage her. But suddenly, her face suddenly changed. Because Ellie had already reached the 14th step, there were only 10 steps in the cellar. So how could she have counted so many? Kira felt something was wrong. She and Brian drove home immediately. When they got to the cellar, they turned on the electric switch, but they searched the entire house. But Ellie was nowhere to be found. When the police were called, their opinion was that Ellie must have run away from home. The next day, Kira mobilized more people to look for Ellie, but still no results. Kira is in deep remorse. Brian also suspects Ellie is just a runaway. Kira comes to the police station again to seek help, but she is met with a series of obstacles. She returned home disappointed, but inadvertently found the symbol on the front door of the house. After searching the internet, she found that the symbols were associated with some demonic legends. She asked Stephen if anything strange had happened last night. Stephen confesses that they just played the gramophone. Kira goes to the cellar alone to investigate. She finds that the steps of the cellar. Each step was carved with Roman numeral symbols. At the end of the cellar steps, there is a strange formula. And the formula was exactly the same as the one on the phonograph record. She turned on the violet light. The wall full of bloody skeletons suddenly appeared. This scene gave Kira the creeps. She called the police. After investigating the scene, they found that it was just a normal reaction to old paint under the violet light. It had nothing to do with Ellie's disappearance. The answer was too much for Kira to accept. In the middle of the night, Kira couldn't sleep for a long time. She suddenly heard the sink next to a burst of noise. She went over and listened carefully. It was the sound of Ellie counting the steps the day she disappeared. Kira followed the sound to the cellar. And here, 
the sound stopped abruptly, she turned on the light, and the cellar was empty. The formula on the floor caught her attention again. The next day Kira photographed the strange symbols on the door and asked a friend to help her investigate. These symbols are ancient Hebrew characters. Put together, they mean Leviathan. And Leviathan is the sea monster of Jewish mythology. Kira suddenly remembered the gramophone. Curious. She goes up to it and plays it, and something strange happened again. The beads on the abacus slide on their own. The door to the storage room opens automatically. Stephen, sitting on the sofa, was as if he was possessed. He read the numbers uncontrollably and headed for the storage room. Luckily, Kira found it in time to stop him, but Stephen had no idea what had just happened. Kira came into the lobby and found an obvious name at the bottom of a huge portrait on the wall. She searched the internet and found some information. She found out that the person in the portrait was the owner of the house. In the middle of the night, something strange happens again. The door of the cellar opened automatically. The lights in the room also went out one after another. Stephen's cry for help came from inside the dark room. Kira arrives and finds her son locked in the cellar. The key to the door was missing. Kira tries to look through the lock to see what's going on inside. Suddenly an eye appears. That's when Stephen appears behind her. She was shocked. Stephen said she had just fallen asleep playing a game. He didn't call out to her mother for help. But the weirdness continued. The closed cellar door suddenly opened of its own accord. All the lights came on. Even the key appeared on the floor. Kira walks into the cellar with trepidation. She was about to find out what was going on when the door behind her closed again. The darkness of the cellar made Kira feel more and more afraid. With the faint light of her cell phone, she looked forward. As a result, her hand slipped. And the phone fell. There was a low roar like a beast from below. Kira was terrified. She rushed to urge Stephen to open the door, but Stephen was too small to reach the key. At this point, Kira can only be left to fate. She could feel that something was approaching her. At the critical moment, Brian came back to the house in time. Kira managed to get out of the situation. Brian returns to the cellar again, looking for Kira's dropped phone, but instead of finding the phone, he accidentally finds animal hair. A dark shadow flashed next to him. Brian thought he was hallucinating and didn't care. The next day, Kira found a physicist. He gave him the formula he found in the cellar. The physicist took one look at it and told Kira that the formula was created by a 12th century alchemist, and that the formula was most likely an unfinished spell. It can open up different dimensions of space. Kira returns home, and the physicist calls again. He told Kira that the formula had also appeared in Belgium. The place where it appeared was the infamous haunted house. The family that lived there had vanished into thin air. Kira immediately brought in Brian to analyze the findings. She explained the meaning of the strange characters. But Brian thinks his wife is full of crap. To prove her theory, Kira took Brian to the cellar, pointing out that Roman numerals were carved on each step. The formula on the ground is the key to unlock another dimension of space. Brian thinks this is pure nonsense. He raises a hammer to smash the cellar steps. But the steps are still intact. But the violence has angered the demons that inhabit the underground. Stephen was playing the game. The beads of the abacus slide on their own. There was a sudden noise behind the boy. He walked toward the darkness. And a pale girl suddenly looked up. Stephen hurriedly called out to his mother. Kira hears the cry for help and rushes upstairs to check. Brian went into the storage room and found his daughter Ellie's cell phone inside. After snooping around, Kira found the daughter of the previous owner of the house. From her, she learned everything about the house. It turns out that the homeowner gave up science and turned to theology after losing his son that year. He opened the door to hell through the cellar and summoned the demon Leviathan. Since then, whenever someone enters the cellar and counts the number down the steps, the demon will be summoned. Brian also gradually believed Kira's speculation. When Kira returned home, Brian also found new clues. He studied the symbols carefully and found that each symbol had an acute triangle next to it. After rearranging them, he got a pattern of inverted pentagrams. The result obtained by joining these special symbols together is Bakamat. It is a kind of demon worshipped by the Templars and is also the gatekeeper of hell. At this moment, Stephen's drone actually flew towards the cellar by itself. To get the drone back, he also followed. Kira, on the other hand, tells Brian that the gramophone may be the key to hell. If they can enter it, they may be able to save their missing daughter. But just as the gramophone was playing, Stephen was counting the numbers and walking down the steps. When he picks up the drone on the floor, the demon finally appears in the cellar. The house is also plunged into darkness. Suddenly, Stephen's screams came from the cellar. The couple rushed down. They only saw the drone and the remote control. 
Stephen had already disappeared. They searched the entire house but still found nothing. Kira stood by the stairs and listened carefully. She heard the sound of her son counting again. She followed the sound and finally found Stephen at the cellar door. Stephen's state is very wrong at this time. His eyes are confused and his body is feverish. Kira rushed to help him take off his clothes and saw the inverted pentagram symbol on his chest. Apparently, something terrible was still going on. Stephen suddenly starts counting down the numbers. Kira is horrified by what she sees. She ran out of the room and asked Brian for help. At that moment, Brian was also under a spell. He was standing around in a trance and started counting down the numbers. Kira was overwhelmed and tried to wake Brian up, but to no avail. When he reached one, the cellar door began to shake violently. Then, the door was slammed open. A strong gust of wind hits him. Kira was so scared that she turned off the lights and hid under the table. She hesitantly crawled out when it was quiet, but the monster suddenly appeared. Kira dodges the monster's attack. She ran straight for the cellar. By now, the stairs to the cellar had become very long. At the end of the stairs, there was a door. By now, the monster had arrived at the cellar door. Kira has no choice but to dive into the darkness. She walks through a door and down a long, dark corridor. Kira has come to a terrible hell. The place was filled with millions of dead souls standing in long lines waiting to be judged. Kira held a flashlight and searched the crowd for her daughter. But the sea of people is like a needle in a haystack. Just as Kira was about to give up, she spotted a familiar tattoo. And it was Ellie. Kira rushed back with her daughter. They passed by the door they came from. Back in the bright house, everything finally returned to normal. Ellie also gradually regains consciousness. Kira is ready to run away with her family immediately. Kira opened the door of the house. What appeared before her eyes were still deep darkness and long steps. And at the end of those steps was her home. She turned around again and her husband and two children started counting numbers like walking corpses. They were obviously trapped in the curse. Although they live in the house, they are in another dimension. This is the end of the story. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.